I'm sure by now we've all seen these kinds of retro record players that look like they're from the 1940s except they can play today's media. You were probably lured in by the looks of it, but then when you saw the price, all interest was poo gone. And you knew you weren't going to buy it because they seem to want to sell these things for the prices of actual antiques. So why did I buy this one? Well, I got it because I want to use it as a prop in a movie. And when it's not being used in a film, it's for decorative purposes. So let's have a look at this one. I remember some years ago I saw a review of a Crossley, I believe it was. And that guy actually took a hammer and smashed it to show what poor quality materials it was made of. Just some cheap wood covered with texture paper. And of course the electronics and mechanics inside was cheap cheap. I looked for that review, but uh, by now so many people have made reviews about these things. I couldn't find that one. It was probably buried and too old now to find easily. Be that as it may, let's have a look at this one. Here we have the Volcano Vinyl Series, the vintage Bluetooth turntable. Bluetooth wireless, three speed modes, SD and USB input, auxiliary input and output, FM radio, CD and cassette player. Song recording to USB, SD, headphone and RCA output, Bluetooth receiving. There is a picture of it. Here are the specifications for those interested. Include it in the box. Wirelessly play music from your Bluetooth enabled device. Vinyl to MP3 recording. Capable of recording high quality MP3 audio from a vinyl record to an SD card or via USB for later playback on your computer and mobile devices. Okay, that could be handy if you have a few records that you want to transfer to MP3. 3 speed record player. Auxiliary in for any non Bluetooth device. Built-in speakers, built-in CD player, cassette player, FM radio, built-in SD card slot, made in China. So we open the box and now we have this package of course with your cables and booklet. Yeah, we're not gonna look at that now, I'm sure we can figure it out. Oh, except let's have a look at these styluses. Are those the styluses? I suppose it's spare needles or something for the gramophone player. Now let's just slide this out of here. Alrighty, there it is. Quite a nice looking design, I would say. In the back you have your, what is this, aerial. Radio aerial, I suppose. And this is your power cable. And this hole, oh, this is just a hole so the record can fit in there, I believe. There's a line out. So you can connect it to much better speakers. Here on this side you have your cassette player. And there is where your SD card and USB stick goes in. The front looks pretty nice. You can easily choose the mode. Bluetooth or FM tuning. Oh, this huge big dial is the tuning dial. Volume. Yeah, I like knobs that turn. Auxiliary. Oh, this is for headphones there. And there you plug in something else. This is for the CD player. There you your disc is gonna go in. Next to that they show power button. Turn it on and it shows pH. What is that? Phono I believe. Yeah that's a record player which is there. Little arm that should hold open the thing. Why is it not holding open the thing? Oh it looks like it should go down. Oh yeah. yeah it seems what you must do is open it and press it down a little bit so that it can go in there, yeah. Little styrofoam PC. There's your really cheap record player turntable. Tape comes off. I'm not sure what you keep there. But I think it's just spare needles or something. We undo this. Take off this plastic in the front. Oh, no, it seems we broke it. No, uh, hopefully not. Oh dear, did we do wrong? I know this white plastic must come off here. Alrighty, we slid the plastic off. Now this isn't right. Alrighty, yeah, well, this is supposed to hook in somewhere. Alrighty, I just click that in there. But now, before we even bother with it further, I have unfortunately experience with these things. And usually, even though they put this nice tape player in, well, the other ones I've tried, the tape player was completely and totally useless. It was like pulling and letting go and pulling and letting go of the tape so fast that you couldn't even make out the music. So, let's see what tape we can play. What's this? 
Timex Sinclair Super Math Load Math. I think this is actually a video game. But before I put an actual tape in there, let's first see if it's not gonna eat the tape. It goes this way around. Of course here on the front we're gonna put it on tape. And it says TP and I can hear something happened. What is this? Is this fast forward? Let's try to take the other way around. I'm not hearing anything. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. Sounds like it's playing okay. Uh, that's how you loaded the video game in the old days, by the way. So now let's load some real music. Only thing I don't like is this only seems to have a fast forward. I mean, this is probably for the memory stick and CD player, perhaps. It doesn't have buttons for the tape player. Yeah, it seems if you want to rewind, you have to press the fast forward on the opposite side of the tape. Ah, and it stopped. So, let's play it. There we go. Okay, well, yes, I am impressed with the tape player. It did not sound like it was going... And it did not eat the tape, so I am well pleased. Only thing I don't like is that it doesn't have the full control buttons for the tape player. Now let's put on some records. So you load it onto your turntable. And as you can see, yeah, this slot here is because they made it just too small for the record to fit in. Now the record is going to get full of dust if you leave it in there. That's the only thing I don't like about this model. Because other makes I've seen, actually the record does fit into the player when it's closed. You can just close it and leave it there. Anyway, let's see. Take it up. Oh, how do you start it? All right, we need to go to Phono first. Then it says pH. And now, do we take it back? No, we take it forward. Yeah, then it starts spinning automatically. Let's line it up with the second track. And then we set her down. Okay, records are playing fine. I uh, see there is where you set the speed. 33 or 45 or 78. Auto, stop, on, off. And once you bring this arm this way, it stops automatically. Start, stop, start, stop. Here you can fasten it by clicking that so it doesn't move around. There's where you choose USB or SD card. Record or delete, rep, prog, some indications, FM stereo, Dell, prog, prep, play, record, and so on and so forth. Let's just play one with a different speed. Use his master's voice speed tester. So we'll just see what the speed is on. Ooh, this record is extremely heavy. It seems they made them really heavy in the earlier years. Obviously a lot more material than this other one from the 80s or whatever. See the records say on them what speed it should be. This one says speed 78. So let's try that. This one that we had just now was 33. So we set that down to 78. Alrighty, let's start playing. A bit scratchy this one. I don't hear a thing. Oh, I think it's on the rim of this record. There's like a little chip or something there. Let's just take it in further. See if it'll play there. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Just a lot more scratchy than the later records. Alright then, yeah. You know what, I think I rather like this thing. Oh, now to close it, you must first lift it up and then push this arm in and close it. 
don't force anything, it does have a principle on which it works. I have a new appreciation for these things because as I said previous makes and models that I tested had an extremely crappy tape player that did not work at all. I didn't even know why they included it if it was gonna be that weak and terrible quality. But on this one yeah it seems the tape player actually works. So I am well pleased with that. And I do like the buttons and dials that are easy to press. Now they say you can also record to memory card and memory stick. Maybe we'll test that another day. Let's do so again.